Hi guys, this is Sajna Binil and welcome to the Business Analysis Guide. In today's video, we'll talk about System Requirement Specification or SRS. What is an SRS? Who creates it? And the structure of an SRS. So come, let's take a deep dive. System okay. Requirement Specification. What is an SRS? Well, an SRS describes how a software should be developed. So essentially, it answers two questions what the software will do and how is it expected to perform. So this is the reason that we write an SRS because so that our technical team understands how the software actually has to be developed. So who creates an SRS? Now SRS can be created by a business analyst or a system analyst. So if you're a functional business analyst, you will have to take some amount of help from your technical team in order to develop an SRS. And I'll tell you which sections you will need help in. Let's look at the structure of an SRS. The first section in an SRS is obviously the introduction. Introduction section will contain the purpose of the document, why this document has been created, document conventions, any terminologies, any project specific terminology that you have used in the document will come as document conventions. Introduction section will also include a section called a scope, which is very, very important. Scope will include in scope and out of scope. The scope session of the SRS helps you lay down the boundary of the system. It gives the customer a clear idea as well as your technical team a clear idea as to what is in scope uh, for the system and what is out of scope. The next section of the SRS is the product description. Now, this section starts off with an overall perspective of the product. What exactly is the challenge that product is going to address? Uh, the feature, the product features can be listed uh, over here. The user types, the different users who are going to use the product will be included as user types or user classes. Constraints, any particular constraints uh, while developing this particular uh, software can be listed in the constraint session. So constraints can be business constraints, technical constraints, resource constraints, all of that can be listed in this section. Assumptions, uh, this particular section will include any assumptions that you had made while developing the software for the customer. And obviously, and the last uh, section talks about risk. If there are any risks associated with the software that you are building for the customer, you can list it in the risk section. Now, the third section of the SRS is a pretty elaborate uh, section because it's, it is going to give uh, details of the features that are expected in the product. Under system features, we'll have functional requirements. So you, as a, as a functional BA, you have to write requirements for each and every feature that is included in that particular product. And the fee requirements should be very granular level. That means don't write requirements at a very high level. So it should have enough information for your technical team to take it to implementation. After writing functional requirement, the next section that you can include is in external interface requirements. Now, external interfaces can be of several types depending upon the type of project that you're working in. Some of the external interfaces are listed here. User interface. This section will include the screen mockups or prototypes that you have built for the customer, which will tell what kind of data is captured from the user. Software interface requirements will include details of the data that is exchanged between upstream and downstream applications. So if your system is talking to 10 other systems, either drawing data from them or sending data to them, then you have to include these under software interfaces. So your upstream and downstream applications will come under software interfaces. Hardware interfaces, hardware interface. This section will include details of the different hardware uh, interfaces uh, that your system is interacting with. Fourth section, communication interface. Communication interface will include details of the APIs that are used by your system or the APIs that are being used by other applications to connect with your system. Then we have a section called as system requirements. Now, what is included in system requirements? 
under system requirements, we have the operating system, processor, RAM, browser, devices. So this section basically includes details of uh, what kind of operating system uh, the software will work in, uh, what kind of processor is required, what kind of RAM is required, how, mu how much RAM is required, uh, what browsers it will work under, what devices it will uh, work in. So system requirements uh, tell the customer clearly uh, what exactly has to be arranged for, for the software to work. Non-functional requirements include quality attributes like performance, security, scalability, compatibility. So uh, you can list all your non-functional requirements in this particular section. So if you're wondering what are non-functional requirements, I have a separate video in which I have uh, given details of non-functional requirement, how it has to be captured in project. Please go and see that. Then we have then you can create a separate section for models or diagrams where you can include process models, process flow diagrams, assess process flow diagrams, and to be process flow diagrams. So uh, again, for process models, I have a separate video. Go and see uh, how you can easily create a process flow diagram. Functional decomposition diagram helps you to break complex components in the system into much simpler, smaller modules. So you can have a functional decomposition diagram. Then use case diagram. I have created a separate video on the use case diagram. Do go and watch it. Use case diagrams actually tell you how uh, the user interacts with the system. The next diagram that you can include is a data flow diagram. Data flow diagrams tell, give you details about how the data is going to flow within the system. Then next one is the sequence diagram. Sequence diagram is a pretty technical diagram. That's the reason you might, if you are a BA, you might need help from your technical team to do this diagram. Now this diagram shows the sequence in which objects within the code are being called. The different classes that you are, your programmers have written those class, uh, each of which have an object, how the object calling happens within the system. Entity relationship diagram, this will give you details about uh, the database structure, the database schema in the backend, how exactly the data is being captured and how it is stored. So it gives the database schema. So out of this model, it is not compulsory to do all these diagrams. These are some of the recommended diagrams. Hmm? So if you're a functional business analyst, you might need help in uh, the data flow diagram, sequence diagram, and an entity relationship diagram. So that's all with respect to the structure of an SRS and what exactly goes into these sections. I hope you found this video useful. If you like this video, drop us a like and subscribe to our channel. I'll be creating many such videos to help you grow in the role of a business analyst. Keep learning, keep growing. Thank you.